Okay, so the last thing that I posted was that I was going to start talking about some tips for judges and some ideas about tests and what's good about them, what's not good about them, what to do, what to do, what to not do in, in training. So I'm going to take various subjects, and today's subject is going to be one that is, to me, extremely important, but some people don't know very much about it, and if, and if they think they know about it, I'm not sure they do, because I see evidence all the time with some judges that they don't quite understand what a contrary mark is, why to do it or why not to do it. So if you take a, this is in my crude drawing, but this is water, that's a gunner. If you throw this bird up here, like this, and if this is the line, a dog that is not trained is going to maybe start for it, but he's going to get out of the water here or somewhere along there and run down the bank and get the bird. That's what an untrained dog would do just by nature. A trained dog is going to swim down here to the bird. So, if you throw the bird back this way, from here like that, that's called a contrary mark. It's contrary to the way we train retrievers. So, what happens if you do that in a, in a field trial or a competition? The untrained dogs are going to go right to it. Now, the trained dog's probably going to go right to it, too, because he's trained to mark. But what, did, what do you end up with? You end up with a situation where both the trained dogs, the dogs that mark, the dogs that don't mark, they all have done the test. And so you don't have any way of determining who the best barker is. So, in general, the good judges, the people that understand training, they're going to throw the bird somewhere where they can really determine whether a dog has marked the bird or not. So a person, especially a sort of a new type person, might say, well, aren't dogs supposed to mark the bird wherever you throw it? Yes, they are. So if you throw a contrary mark, my notion is that most of the trained dogs would go to the bird. Well, why shouldn't you throw that in a trial? Because the trained dogs and the untrained dogs, the dogs that mark, the dogs that don't mark, they all get that bird and you want to have separation. Well, what's wrong with that idea? Well, what if there's another bird here thrown there? see that. Well, so the untrained dog, he's going to think he's going for this bird. Whoop, now he's in that bird. That's why you want a dog that pretty much goes towards where the bird is. There's other factors. It takes more courage, more stamina, more training, more intelligence, more of everything to get the bird if it's thrown this way than if it's thrown back the other way contrary. So, in a little summary, a smart, knowledgeable judge is not going to throw contrary marks when they really count. Now, you might slip one in on a shorter bird once in a while, but generally speaking, the long, tough bird is what's going to determine whether or not you have a really good marker that you're trying to judge. Another thing is, what if this bird later on in life, what if this bird 
is retired. It makes it worse. Now dog's getting out over here and flailing around and is not, is demonstrating there's no mark involved. So how do you practice something like this? So that when a judge that's not knowledgeable throws a contrary mark, how do you deal with that? Well, you got to practice it because you don't want a dog that can only do it one way. So uh, if you're judging a, a trial, especially in the derby where you only have two birds, usually, you don't want to throw a contrary mark because you can't tell whether the dog marked it or whether he's just going there because he's not trained. So nonetheless, if you want a really competitive dog, you must still train on it because guess what? You're going to run under judges that don't understand what, why they're putting that bird there. What I'm hoping to do is get more people where they do understand it. So in training, you have to practice it, but in judging, doing it is not going to give you a very good result to what you want, which is to figure out who the best dog is, who the best marker is. So that's my uh, thought for today. And I'm going to keep doing this now because I've been to a bunch of field trials and I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm going to try to describe a lot of these things so you can practice them. So if you're judging, you don't make fatal mistakes. So in judging, if you're judging, so you can do a test where the cream rises to the top and the dogs that aren't as good or aren't as well trained will not be all jumbled up with your top dogs. So have a great day. Please go to my website, billhillman.net, look around on there, 